Looks like we are live here. So let's go ahead and get underway here. Hello and welcome to the MMA Live Chat Show. I'm Rich Davey and it's Thursday, October 9th, 2014. On today's show, we'll be discussing Kung Lee's claims that the UFC HGH testing is flawed. Uh, Piotr Holman testing positive for PEDs, and we'll also speak about PEDs and MMA and the UFC in general. And if we have any time, maybe we will talk about one or two other things in the final thoughts segment. On today's show, we have yours truly, Amy Gazelle, and Fred Kirby. Okay, guys, thanks for taking part in another show. I appreciate you taking time to be here and joining me to discuss these issues about uh, HGH, TRT, and MMA. So go ahead and say hello to anybody that might be listening, fellas. How's it going, Rich? How's it going, Fred? Uh, go ahead to be with you guys again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's happening, fellas? Okay. Appreciate you guys being here. Really good. All right, let's talk about. I know we spoke about Kung Lee a couple of times on a couple of the other shows. There were, you know, that big controversy regarding the picture of him that surfaced uh, just before that fight that he was going to have with uh, Michael Bisping in Macau, China. Um, you know, we were kind of joking about, you know, the way that he looked and everything like that, where, you know, he was making um, the excuse, I guess you could call it, why he looked so pumped up was because he had just got done working out, the lighting was just right, the sweat was glistening off his body. And then after that, I mean, everybody pretty much thought that, you know, he was making that up as far as, uh, it, you know, the rumors going around that he was doing HGH or, or steroids there. But um, on the last show where we did speak about this, I think I was the only one actually who uh, was supporting, you know, the possibility that maybe there was in fact something wrong with the testing. Um, and apparently that seems to be, you know, what that problem just might be there. Uh, I don't know if anybody else out there has read about this. I'm sure some of you have. Um, but the, the problem here is that in order to do the proper HGH testing, the testing has to be done in a WADA lab um, because apparently from the things that I've read out there, uh, you can't do proper testing for HGH unless you have the proper materials, whatever it is that they use to test for the HGH to get that determination. Um, but you can't get those materials to do the proper testing unless you are the WADA or the WADA approved lab. So, what have you guys heard on this, Dana? Uh, pretty much uh, what you're saying. I'm reading an article on it right now. Um, you know, uh, they are uh, testing uh, something that, like you said, that is pretty much something a company like the. Or, you know, the WADA uh, really has to test to be able to get positive results. So, it, you know, it just uh, well, not even positive false results. positives yeah, exactly. very, very highly uh, exactly. likely. So it is very possible. Yeah, exactly. That's what they're yeah. saying. They're saying not that you can't test for it in other labs, but testing is going to generate false results or false positives. <laughs> Eddie's... Eddie's saying that Mayhem Miller barricaded himself in his house. SWAT and tons of cops are outside his house trying to arrest him. He's live tweeting the entire thing. Who yeah. is? <coughs> May Mayhem Miller. Yeah, he went off the deep end again. Did you see what he said about uh, Dana White? I see White? what he said about Dana White and the uh, STD and uh, the, the woman that they know or whatever. But I guess this is... Uh, it's going on right, live now. right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was I was just reading that before we went live that uh that, Well let's uh, stay on topic. If we have time, we'll talk about that in the end. Let's um, run through this here and then we'll move on. Okay. Um any any more opinions on that before I throw it over to Fred Damon? I know that's um, I agree with you. The the false positives are, are too likely to to happen. I mean it does look like it, but I mean with what he's saying, yeah, um Fresh out of a workout, sweat. I mean, a picture can can uh, look totally different than you know. You can a picture can make you look a lot better than than what you actually are, uh, especially after a workout and everything else. 
and the lighting is just right. Yeah, it, it could <laughs> actually do it. I mean, you would have to actually see pictures of them before. Before uh, the sweat and after. Yeah, exactly, to see. Okay, Fred, I know you're not a proponent of that um, excuse, there, and I don't think you would actually believe that the testing is flawed, but what do you think? Have you read about this, and what are your opinions? <clears throat> Um, yeah, no, listen, I do think that the testing could be flawed. That very well could be the case. That probably is the case. Um, I think that doing these type of blood testings, that water should be probably involved and that you need a high level of, you know, scientists and folks like that to, to test like this. So I think that it, the test could very well have been botched. I don't doubt that whatsoever. Now, <clears throat> was Kung Lee's test botched is a completely different story for me. Um, I don't buy the light excuse. I, I, like, I like this. You're like a lawyer. You always get that other side of the argument. <laughs> I love well, it. Well, but I, I, just, I just don't. I, I don't, um, you know, I, it's one of those deals where if it looks like a dog, it barks like a dog and runs like a dog, it's probably a dog, man. I mean, there was this ton of speculation before he's talking about the light, and then afterwards he put that interview out where he's talking about... You know, how much sleep he got and, and eating kale and just all this kind of crazy shit. But then the soy, the soy that he was talking about. Yeah, 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 the soy. I mean, it's, I don't know, it's silly shit. I, I think that they probably do need to fine-tune their testing for sure because I think that something like that is completely possible for them to botch the results. But as far as him, like, uh, you know, uh somehow them botching his results and him getting a way out of this. I don't know. I, I don't really necessarily believe that whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I kind of think he, he was actually on something. Um, but I do I do also want to give him the benefit of the doubt, too. Yeah, I mean, I noted on a couple of the other shows, too, that he's he hasn't really had the best physique in the world. He's always looked a bit on the soft side. I don't know if you guys agree with that, but... In my opinion, looking at him in the past and some of the pictures of him, he never really looked like he was a, you know, real fit, ripped kind of guy. He always looked like you know he had a little bit of softness, like you know, kind of like B.J. Penn back in the day, you know. Yeah, and at his age, it's it's kind of hard to get ripped really quick, um, without without something. Um, he did he did still look a little bit a little bit soft, you know. I mean, he didn't he did look ripped, but he looked he didn't look totally jacked up like Gulf War did. True, true. But, like, I don't know. Like I said, I guess anything's possible. Maybe he had great lighting. Maybe he had a really good fucking camp and he was just peaking. And then just maybe they botched the fucking test results, too. And all of those things coincide together and Kung Lee just had a really shitty string of events happen to him. But I find that all kind of unlikely. You know what I mean? At the grand... At the end of the day, I think that, that he fucking probably did this hot. Uh, like I said, the whole testing procedure and, and how that needs to be fine tuned has merit for sure. But I don't think it, um, I don't think it's going to give Kung Lee a pass on this one. Not for me at least. Yeah, I don't. Another thing I don't understand about this is how it went from a nine month suspension to now a one year suspension. Uh, you know, there just seems to be some stuff circling around it that. That you know doesn't seem uh, right, you know. So what do you think? Are you thinking that the UFC did that because they want to kind of push him out of uh, the UFC now, or what? I, because it's, it's UFC that actually said there was a miscommunication when they initially handed down the suspension. It was nine months, and then they changed it to a year after that. But you're saying they didn't really change it; that it was a year always. It's just that it was miscommunicated. Yeah. Um, the UFC is notorious for miscommunication, so. <laughs> what a bullshit punishment, though, too. Oh, sure. <laughs> Don't let the guy fight for a year. He fucking barely fights every year anyways. Like, he could stay out a year, go do some fucking kung fu flick in China, and come back and be fine. not really a, a penalty in any way, for me at least. It doesn't seem like that's a very fucking hard it is age. It is a harsh punishment. Um, How and, many times would you really fall you that at, year anyway? I know, but if you look at any professional sport, um, even baseball, you the first first positive test, it's like fifty games. Um, it's a year seems legit, just because 
you can't you can't uh, suspend him for like two fights. You know where if he fights one time a year, it's two years. Uh, especially at his age, I mean, the guy really doesn't fight that much as it is. Um, I believe they give all fighters one year suspension. One year can make a hell of a difference in the fighting game, and I, I agree that one year is is a lengthy enough uh, suspension. Um, but that one year also needs to come with heavy uh, heavy testing during that one year, and uh, continued heavy testing afterwards for another uh, two or three years for for having a positive uh, test in the past. You know, um, usually people that that do do this are known to repeat offend on it. So I, I think uh, one year suspension and then two years of, of heavy testing afterwards would be would be sufficient, really. I think they actually, um, in the recent past, it was six months to nine months if you got busted on, you know, PEDs or whatever. Um, and I think that they then put it up to nine months as the standard, but now it seems like they've gone up to a year as the standard. But but here's the issue, fellas. What the fuck is that helping? You know, like like you said, more guys than ever now are popping. Six yeah. months to a year must not scare guys very much at all because everybody is fucking juicing out of their mind still. I think if you're going to have a zero tolerance, Paul, I don't think you should necessarily be cut, but if you get fucking tested positive, pissed and hot, you need to get stroked majorly. I don't know whether it's financial or your fighting career. You need to do it to the point to where motherfuckers at the gym are like, yo, I'm not going to do that because if I get caught, I'm fucked. You know what I'm saying? Like, there needs to be some repercussions with this shit. Kung Lee would have fought maybe once in that year anyways. Maybe. If he wasn't filming a movie. If he's filming a movie or something, he would have fucking took that year off anyways, and this punishment literally means zero to him. Literally. Yeah. I, I completely agree that um, I I think if you do piss hot one time, that, that they should just throw the book at you and like throw you out of the sport um, just, just to... Uh, try and curb it, but right now the way it is, uh, the way they've been treating everybody else, I think the one year is fair uh, for him. Well, I think I think this. We we've seen them progress from having acceptable levels, you know, throughout the UFC testing for the drug testing, and then they got to the point where they banned it altogether. Now. The way that they're going about things, it's not really banned altogether because if it was banned altogether, then I agree with Damon, then they should probably ban you for life if it's banned altogether, you know? See, I think I think it needs to be somewhere in the middle. I think six months to a year is child's play, and I think that a, a, a lifetime ban on your first offense may be a bit harsh, but I do think there needs, there needs to be something stern, though. Even on that first time, I don't know, fifty thousand dollar fine. No matter who you are, if yeah, you're but, but a lot of these guys do that that do get popped. Maybe they're not making anything near that. I mean, some of these guys yeah. you see, they're only making eight to ten thousand dollars a fight. If they fight three to four times a year, they wouldn't even be able to cover that. Well, that's not my fucking problem, now, is it? I guess you got to go flip pizzas. I'll garnish your fucking wages. You get you test positive in Vegas. You don't fight here no more until you pay your fucking fifty grand off. I guess now, you should. I was always a proponent, as long as the guys could meet the thresholds that were set. But again, you know, once they set those thresholds, the guys just kept pushing the limits, and they kept trying and kept trying to cheat the system. And you know, it's gotten to the point where it's you know just way too many guys are testing. So we know it's not just that some people are using steroids and using TRT and you know HGH, but they're actually abusing it because the levels that are coming back are just you know, elevated levels that were just not even acceptable within the parameters of what they even used to consider legitimate before, you know? Yeah. Eddie, Eddie's saying he doubts the UFC wants him out. They need him to appeal to the Asian market. And yeah, I agree with that. Um, but um, I, I, I do agree with the zero to tolerance policy. Um, you know, especially, it depends mainly on on what it is. If it's a human work. HGH, human growth hormone, definitely banned. Uh, anything like that, you know. If it's something like weed, no. You know, I mean, 
they're they're totally different drug tests. I don't believe that's a performance enhancing drug. Um, each one should be treated differently. Um, as as how how bad uh, how bad you can abuse it, how bad it's been abused, uh, along the lines of, of that. Where you know if it's the they got caught using something that just helps boost uh, metabolism or something to help lose weight, where it's not necessarily uh, to actually gain uh, muscle or anything like that. I mean, depending on the Severity of the drug should right, be. So let's, let's let's see. Let's take a little poll here, based on you know the drugs that would fall under steroids. You know HGH, TRT, and all the other drugs that are used for hormones and shit like that. Um, what do we think a severe penalty would be that would maybe deter these guys without making them bankrupt? Because I don't think you should make the guys bankrupt. Uh, you know I think that's a little harsh. To, you know to just you know take somebody's food off their table, but. You know, in essence, you know, banning them for a lengthy period of time is pretty much doing the same thing without robbing their pocket. So, you know, if these guys were making, you know, tens of millions of dollars, I would say, yeah, fine, let's take some money from them. But, you know, you know and I know, and I hate to sound like a UFC basher because I'm not, um, but the UFC doesn't pay some of these guys even enough, even if they're fighting three times a year, to be able to even, you know, afford to live and own a home, you know. So what do you guys think based on under the Fellow saying that steroids, and that includes all the other drugs, you know, that fall under that. What do you think would be a harsh enough penalty, penalty to deter these guys from using so they don't use at all, and that zero tolerance policy is actually a real thing? Daniel, what do you think? Um, steroids, steroid abuse, uh, anything to do with steroids. Uh, TRT still on the fence, but I believe it. It is a steroid, so. Well, that's also that's banned too. No, there's no. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, any, any kind of steroid, steroid, any kind of steroid, I I believe the UFC needs to outright um, just say you're 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 done if you do steroids. If you get caught doing steroids, mm -hmm. you're done in the UFC, and actually make that retroactive. And guys like Nate Marquardt, who have who have tested positive for steroids in the past, well, you probably just, have a hard time making it retroactive. There'd be some lawyer out there who'd be willing to fight that, but. Okay, so Damon is in the camp where one strike and you're out. Fred? I would give the same credence to that, I guess. I would, I would, if you if you could afford the fine and you were high enough up the totem pole, I'll give you this. If, if a guy is only making five grand to show and five to win, he can't pay the 50000 Fair enough, his ass is gone. Obviously, he's not a marquee fighter of any caliber, of any way, shape, or form. If you test positive and you ain't bringing in you know, Conor McGregor numbers, your ass is certainly out of the UFC, no doubt about it, period. If you're a big star, if you're a Chell Sonnen, if you're a whoever the fuck, I'm even willing to give you the pass, but it's got to be something harsh. It's got to be a hard fine, a year suspension, a hard fine, something that's actually going to make these guys fucking think twice about doing it again. And if you test positive again for any fucking thing, I don't care if you're John Jones or Anderson Silva, you're gone. Period. You get one fucking strike, you get laid off for a while, you get taxed a big amount of money, and if you fuck up again, anybody, you're out. Well, that sounds pretty fair there. I mean, I would also, you know, maybe not be as hard as you with the money. I mean, the guys who are on the low, lower end of the earnings scale, I wouldn't be finding them money like that. I don't know necessarily that I would kick them out just because they couldn't pay the fine, but I would say... Maybe it should be something graduated in between what Fred was just saying, where, you know, a year minimum, boom, you're out for a year. And then for the guys that are, you know, you know, earning money and, and have maybe, you know, tens of thousands or tens of millions or whatever or millions of dollars that they've earned, um, then maybe those guys should get fined 50000 Then the guys who are, you know, not able to pay that fine, instead of maybe a year, maybe they should get 18 months, which would be pretty severe for them too because, again, you know those guys that are making anywhere between six to eight thousand dollars for a fight. I mean, take them out for a year and a half. They're not going to be able to feed their family, and they will, like Fred said, have to go flip burgers or whatever, or train, or you know. You know, so what I, I, I think somewhere in the middle there. But none of us seem to agree on you know what we think is the solution. But at least we all put some sort of idea out there. Another thing I would like to add too is it, it, I would kind of be curious on why. I mean, obviously most of these guys are doing it to, to gain a competitive edge, 
But um, I don't know. Maybe the UFC needs to have somebody to like. Listen, you test positive for steroids once. They need to. You need. You know, like Matt Hughes has kind of got this honorary job of you know him and Chuck Liddell are doing shit that nobody really understands what they're doing. Maybe one of these guys need to show up. If you test positive, old Chucky shows up at your door, knocks on your door, and gives you a nice stern talking to about what the fuck's going on. And and you know, I don't know. Let these guys understand how big of a fucking deal it is. I think you see guys. And, and I guess they're starting to do this. I mean, you've seen what happened to Vanderlei Silva, and, and you know, even though uh, that's a whole different topic, and there's a bunch of bullshit in that. I think they are starting to take it a bit more serious. So I think that it, generally, all in all, things are heading in the right direction. I think they're definitely starting to realize that it's a major problem, and they're starting to give out stiffer punishments and harsher fines. So. Okay. All right, so let's move on. Then. Let's move on then, because we did want to speak about a couple other things. We only got about five minutes left here. Um, Yotra Holman tested positive for PEDs. He actually won a fifty thousand um, dollar bonus. I believe it was fight of the night bonus that they shared, and uh, he's going to have to forfeit that. And he will probably also be out for a year. What have you guys read on that? Not much. I, I I heard about it, but I haven't really read much on it. What did he test uh, positive for? Uh, I believe. Hang on a second. Let's see if I can find it. The thing that struck me about Peter Hallman Dost, was just... Dost, uh, I can't even pronounce it. Dostronolo? Yeah. I, I, I just thought it was odd that he tested positive. Of You know, he... he He's a very unassuming looking guy, you know. He's definitely not a guy that you would, uh, uh, you know, assume would test positive or something like that. And when I read that article, I just was kind of surprised, I guess, a bit. It gives you a, a bit of a, a surprising feeling that maybe it's a bit more fucking rampant than you think. Like, I didn't think that he would test positive of a lot of people, although he did seem pretty fucking strong for his size. Just down alone. Yeah, that's a steroid. He's got nine months suspension. Um, yeah. right, so what is it? I mean, it doesn't seem like there's any sort of friggin' consistency here. Is it nine months? Is it a year? Is it six? Exactly. months? Exactly. That's what I'm. I'm saying is it. It's not. It's not consistent. You know, and how the UFC went with nine months for Kung Lee to a year. And and uh, miscommunication, but Holman tests positive for steroids, and he gets nine months. You know, the nine months sounded reasonable, are sound uh, reasonable in in uh, aspect of the way uh, Kung Lee was suspended nine months, and then Kung Lee was uh, boosted up to a year. I guess I don't know if it's because it's the HGH and one's a steroid. I mean. They're both uh, bad. I mean, steroids are steroids, and human yeah, I mean, we gotta stop trying to, are to, a step above it. Yeah, we got to stop trying to like classify them and say that this is that, that is that. If they fall under the steroid umbrella, that's the only way to combat this and really get the guys to comply. It's just plain and simple. Anything that falls under the steroid umbrella, you know, no excuse, man. That's it. Boom. You get a fucking year. I mean... Not well, you know, it's six months or nine months or, you know, one year or two years, which is what we've seen with Chael Sonnen. Um, so, I mean, really, I mean, they just got to say steroids, anything under that umbrella, you're out for a year minimum. You guys who can't pay the fine on top of that, you know, you'll get a little extra time to sit out on the side. So, I don't know, I think that's going to be the, the most... Eddie's the most saying, guys, guys do it because the only way to get paid is to be one of the top ten fighters in the promotion pressure to perform and win. Uh, you know, that I I know that's why people we only got do a couple do minutes it. left. We only got a couple of minutes left. We got one more topic, so make it quick. I, I know that's why people do it, but you know, that that's not an excuse. Um, you know, if if you're gonna do it and you get busted, um, too bad. Okay, so yeah, we're all over the place on this one here. I mean Damon thinks you should go hard on them one strike you're out. Fred thinks um, you should apply a one-year suspension with a penalty, a financial penalty, penalty on top of that. If the guys who aren't able to pay that penalty, they should be booted out of the UFC. And then I'm going, you know, a little bit more lenient. Where I'm saying, you know, give them at least a year and a fine, like Fred said. That sounds reasonable to me. And then the guys who aren't able to pay the fine, you know, give them another six months of time off. 
I think that's basically the only way to really combat it. And like I said, put it all under that one umbrella. Don't make excuses. If it's some sort of hormone or you know steroid in some regard that helps you out muscular wise or whatever with the testosterone levels, then you know it's banned, zero tolerance. You know, serve the penalty if you get caught. Right. The harsher the penalty, the less they'll be doing it. Okay. All right, we only have two minutes left here, and uh, we did want to talk about one other topic real briefly. Um, we're hearing, you know, like Fred is saying there, it's a lot more rampant than most people think, you know, steroid abuse or HGH or TRT. Um, and we've seen some fighters actually come out and say that 90% of the fighters in MMA are using, you know, steroids or TRT or HGH. So um, there really isn't a, a conclusive percentage number on that, but what percentage do you guys think may in fact be using or steroids or whatever? Mm, at any given time or, you know, um, it's really hard to say. I, uh, I would say probably less than half, less than 50%. Uh, I think guys more or less do take supplements, but I don't know if necessarily they're taking stuff like TRT and stuff like that. Uh, Okay. All right, Fred, what do you think? What percentage-wise, real, real quick? We only got a minute left. It's funny that he uh, that he threw out 50% because that's actually what I would say, man. I would say it's probably 50-50. I would say that half of the guys competing are, are getting some kind of competitive edge illegally. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the percentage may be, but I know that a lot of the fighters have said that 90% of the guys are using... I'm sure that number is probably dropping because, you know, as you guys know, these guys are getting busted left and right. They can't make money. They're getting penalties. Um, so uh, I, I was thinking that maybe the number was a little bit higher. I don't know if I would say 80%, but I would say probably around 60, 65% of the guys were probably using. But we're seeing a lot more guys come out now that are MMA fighters, and they're complaining about it and saying how rampant it is. So maybe that number has, you know, fallen back quite a bit now that you have the fighters themselves complaining about that. Um, so we don't really know what that number is because, you know, that's everybody's speculation on that. But I did want to mention some of the fighters that have been busted for, you know, steroids and you know, that whole umbrella of things. Josh Barnett, Tim Celia, Chemo, Nate Marquette, Peter Belfort, Stefan Bonner, Diego Sanchez, Tiago Alves, Melvin Gillard, Sean Shirk, Hermes Franca, um, Nakamura, Anthony Torres, James Irvin, Chris Levin, Cairo Parisian, Chael Sonnen, um, Tyson Griffin, Tiago Silva. Um, I mean, just the list of almost every guy that is, <laughs> you know, a, a known name. I mean, it, and this list just goes on and on and on and on and on. And it's, it's you know, not just unknown fellows doing it. It's, you know, bigger name fighters that are doing it. So that, it, well, maybe... Maybe not so much that are the only ones that are doing it, but they're the ones getting caught, <laughs> you know? Yeah, but how many of those are within the last year? And and they do test before and after these events. So And there's there's quite a few events a year. You know, within the last year, it was Ali Bogatinov, Kevin Casey, um, Mike King, uh, Brian Ortega, and Kung Lee. Oh, yeah, and, of course, Piotr Holman. That, that's... That's a small number compared to yeah, but to again, the are, these fighters. Guys, are these guys only getting tested because they're bigger name fighters? I mean, they say it's random testing, but is it really? I mean, you know, are they going after the guys that are actually you know on the uh, you know the, the main cards more so than the smaller guys? You well, know? I thought they didn't they test them before and after the fights, no matter what. And then well, that's what that's what, saying, that's what it's saying they want to institute. I don't know if they have completely across the board, but they, but they said that that's what they're moving towards, but again, um, they're saying it's going to be random. I don't know if they're going to test every single fighter, but they did say they're moving in that direction, so. All right, yeah, Fred, you get the final... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say... Before we go, I was just going to say, I wonder if, um, I wonder if uh, steroids will end up being a big issue with women and women's MMA. I wonder if it'll uh, start to spread over there, or if it'll tend to not be as big an issue with the women as it is with the men. Well, um, we've, we've already seen some women busted for that already, and you know, right. a lot of people go after uh, uh, Chris Justino for that because she was busted um, right after the, uh, the Gina Carano fight where she won the uh, won the title from Carano, but it wasn't in that fight that she got busted. It was shortly after that. 
but you know we're seeing and I've seen a couple other women fighters that it's like holy shit you look like a man you know mm -hmm. and it's not normal for women to have those kind of muscles um, not, so, not to say that a woman can't have you know that muscular physique like some women do without doing steroids but I mean some women right. just look like they're so fucking jacked up it's just crazy Right, right. It'll be interesting to see if it spreads through women's MMA like it, like it kind of seems to have with the men. All right, Damon, you have one comment before Fred jumped in, real quick, briefly. No, I can't remember what it was now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Fred, you get the last word, buddy. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just think that it's probably a little bit bigger of a deal than um, most people think that it is. And I, like I said, <clears throat> I think they're heading in the right direction. They seem like they're starting to make the testing a lot more stringent. So I think this shit will get better in the next coming years as far as um, performance-enhancing drugs go. Yeah, and I just wanted to mention in that list of fighters that I called off, not all of those were, you know, steroids and, and under that umbrella, but... You know, they were trying to say that marijuana is also a PED, and, you know, I guess there's two sides that argue on that. We won't go into it now because you have the, the type of weed that hypes you up and you got the type of weed that chills you out. You know, so, um, you know, a lot of those names that were on that list there, they were busted for marijuana. So, right. You know, I guess what they're doing is they're considering that a PED also, but I think most people would say... Well, it's you know, a banned substance. So. Yeah, I would say marijuana is clearly not a PED, but, you know, no. there are arguments out there trying to say that it is. Okay, guys, um, what we're going to do here is we're going to wrap this show up here. Um, we're going to take a break for a few minutes. We're going to try to set up another show where we're going to talk about um, Rory McDonald getting the next title shot in Canada. So, uh... Thanks, everybody, for listening in. Um, again, if you want to you know, get on the show and chat, let us go over to MMA Chat, create an account, let us know you want to join us, and we'll do our best to get you on the show. Uh, thanks, Eddie, uh, for sending in the questions there. You're welcome to join us on the next show if you want. Um, any other things you guys want to say here before we close out? No, we can save it for the next show, I'm sure. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you guys in uh, probably 15 minutes or so. Okay. All right, bye-bye. Take it easy, okay. Uh, Michael Bisping in Macau, China. Um, you know, we were kind of joking about you know the way that he looked and everything like that, where you know he was making um, the excuse, I guess you could call it, why he looked so pumped up was because he had just got done working out, the lighting was just right, the sweat was glistening off his body, and then after that, I mean, everybody pretty much thought that you know he was making that up as far as. Uh, it, you know, the rumors going around that he was doing HGH or, or steroids there. But um, on the last show where we did speak about that, Fred Kirby. Okay, guys, thanks for taking part in another show. I appreciate you taking time to be here and joining me to discuss these issues about uh, HGH, TRT, and MMA. So go ahead and say hello to anybody that might be listening, fellas. How's it going, Rich? How's it going, Fred? Uh, glad to be with you guys again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's happening, fellas? Okay. Appreciate you guys being here. Really good. All right. Let's talk about. I know we spoke about Kung Lee a couple of times on a couple of the other shows. There were, you know, that big controversy regarding the picture of him that surfaced uh, just before that fight that he was going to have with H. Unless you have the proper materials, whatever it is that they use to test for the HGH to get that determination. Um, but you can't get those materials to do the proper testing unless you are the WADA or the WADA approved lab. So, what have you guys heard on this, Dana? Uh, pretty much uh, what you're saying. I'm reading an article on it right now. Um, you know, uh, they are uh, testing uh, something that, like you said, that is pretty much something a company like the. Or Looks like we are live here. So let's go ahead and get underway here. Hello and welcome to the MMA Live Chat Show. I'm Rich Davey and it's Thursday, October 9th, 2014. On today's show, we'll be discussing Kung Lee's claims that the UFC HGH testing is flawed. Uh, Piotr Holman testing positive for PEDs and we'll also speak about PEDs and MMA and the UFC in general. And if we have any time, maybe we will talk about one or two other things in the final thoughts segment. On today's show, we have yours truly, Amy Gazelle. I think I was the only one, actually, who uh, 
was supporting you know the possibility that maybe there was in fact something wrong with the testing um, and apparently that seems to be you know what that problem just might be there uh, I don't know if anybody else out there has read about this I'm sure some of you have um, but the, the problem here is that in order to do the proper HGH testing the testing has to be done in a WADA lab um, because apparently from the things that I've read out there uh, you can't do proper testing for HGH 